Hi, welcome back. Um, last time we talked about major scales and what makes a scale major. Uh, let's just do a little bit of review and, re and sort of go over what we talked about. We talked about the fact that a scale is an ascending or descending pattern of notes which begins and ends on the same note. That when we call it major, what that means is that the relationship between those notes in the scale follows the pattern whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Or you could think of it as two half steps, two half steps, one half step, two half steps, two half steps, two half steps, one half step. If that's easier, because remember, a whole step is exactly twice as big as a half step. We talked about how when we have that pattern that tonicizes a note, that makes one of our notes the home note. Uh, we talked about how in C, if you have a C major song, C becomes this place of stability. It becomes this place of um, resolution. There's not any conflict when we end on C and C, when we're in C. If we end on a different note, it sounds kind of weird, maybe. Maybe it doesn't sound like an end. By the way, this isn't to say that if you're in C major, you must have your last note be C. It's just pointing out that C becomes a very stable place, that it becomes sort of the, the note which everything revolves around. Okay? So, C is the tonic. So what we're going to talk about today is um, not how to move on and tonicize something else, but rather um, the fact that C becoming the tonic is not the only thing that happens. We also give jobs and roles to other notes. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this. You can refer back to the last video if you need to see the whole, whole half pattern again. We're just going to have the scale and the note names. Now, what I want to talk about is the fact that C has been given a job, but there are all these other notes, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Um, they are also given unique jobs in the scale. They, are give, they become what is called, excuse me, a scale degree, okay? And each scale degree has a name. Um, it actually has multiple names. It has the letter name. It has the fact that, for example, right here, C is the what? It's the first note in the scale, right? Right? And D is the second note in the scale. Um, theoretically, this caret should be above the above the numbers, but you, when you see this little caret above a number, it means scale degree one, two, and three, four, five, six, seven. Right? One, two, three, four. F is the fourth, G is the fifth, A, B, C, right? So you, you have those. Remember, C is not the eighth, it's the first again. I should go over that. C was the first degree of the scale, right? Uh, way back at the beginning. Well, if I keep counting up, D becomes the second, E becomes the third, F becomes the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. When I get to seven, I come back to C. Now, this note at the top of the scale, should uh, make sure that I don't do that. At the top of the scale, this C right here, it's still a C. If I play the low C with it, you can hear they're the exact same note, right? They're the exact same tone. They both are the home. I can end my piece. Or I could go on the top C. The C's both function as tonics, which means that when I get to seven here, just like I wrap around with letters, I wrap around with numbers too. So this becomes the first degree of the scale again. Because remember, one isn't a quantitative value. We're not counting the number of notes necessarily. We're actually assigning them jobs. So C's job was to be the tonic. Okay. Now, I'm just going to put in all of the scale degree names and we can talk about them. So in the key of C major, C is the tonic, D is what we call the super tonic, super meaning above, it is above the tonic, E becomes the median, F becomes the subdominant, somebody else is freaking out, let's do this, G becomes the dominant, a becomes the submedian. B becomes the leading tone. 
and of course C. Oop, I press space. We're gonna just do that. Oh no, that does it too. Sorry, I'm doing this as lyrics, and Sibelius is trying to help me put in the lyrics correctly. We'll just do this. And C is, of course, again, the tonic. These are just names for the jobs that we are giving each note. Each note has a job to do. Each job has a name. Okay? C tonic, D supertonic, E median, F subdominant, G dominant, A submedian, B leading tone, and C tonic. Now, the two that are most important are tonic, generally speaking, are tonic and dominant. Okay, Oops. yeah, let's make that italic, okay? So tonic, and I see you can, can't see that because of my camera. Tonic and dominant. The tonic-dominant relationship is one of the most important in Western tonal music theory, okay? The, this falling pattern, or uh, rising from dominant to the upper tonic, defines a lot of the key. In fact, it is movement from a chord based on the dominant to a chord based on the tonic that actually allows us to hear that C is the tonic. Okay, And I can actually do that. I can pick a different note and move to uh, pretend that it's the dominant and move to the note that is what five below or four above it and it becomes tonic so right now C is our tonic but if I do this uh, you know you can hear that different note has become a different note has become the tonic uh, we'll talk more about that several videos hence but just know that for right now dominant and tonic have a significant and important relationship now, one of the questions I always get as I'm going over these scale degrees is why is this, first of all, why is this important? And second of all, why in the heck is submediant above the median, even though it says sub? I mean, subdominant is below the dominant, so why would the median be below the submediant? That makes no sense. Shouldn't be this the supermediant? And the answer to this is very unsatisfying. Um, for right now, I just need you to accept that and just accept that that's weird. Um, Submediant is below the mean. I mean, if you want to, you can think about the fact that this tonic, you know, there's a supertonic above it and a mediant above that, and this submediant is below that mediant, right? Like, my scale doesn't necessarily stop at the upper C. It could keep continue to the next C and the next C and the next C and the next C to infinity and into crazy town, right? And down into crazy town, right? Like C, B, blah, blah, blah on the other end. Um, so for now, if you just understand that the sixth degree of the scale, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, the sixth degree of the scale is the submediant, even though the third is below it and it's, it is the median, that's fine. Second of all, why is this important? Well, we saw that tonic was our home note, right? That it defined our, our 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 tonality. It was sort of the center of all the other notes that we always wanted to come back to it, um, and that it was the most stable, um, even maybe even boring uh, place to be. Um, and that's obviously important, right? Because when you're looking at like standard tonal music, when you get to the end of a piece, And you want to end the piece. You can't end the piece here. Generally, if you want it to sound stable, um, that you're going to end on that tonic. So that tonic functions as something really important. Now, 
All of these other roles, supertonic, mediant, subdominant, dominant, submediant, leading tone, are all really important, and they all play a different role. We've talked about how dominant and tonic relationship, that the dominant always wants to move down or up to the tonic. Now, another one that always wants to move is the leading tone, right here. This is another one that is important, and we're actually going to see the leading tone and the dominant are related as well. Sorry. Let me switch this to italicize. Because leading tone always wants to go to the tonic. If I walk up from the low tonic to the leading tone, you want to hear the leading tone go to the tonic. That's why it's called the leading tone. It leads up to the tonic. Okay? It is, in fact, this relationship between leading tone and tonic, which is one of the most powerful um, ways which we tonicize C, in which we make C sound like the tonic. This half step, this this need for the leading tone to just, just scoot up that half step, remember it's a half step, up to that C, it's so close, it's almost there, we just want it to go that little bit and it goes and it just it, it unfolds perfectly up to that beautiful tonic, right? Um, so the leading tone also functions in a really important way. If you'll recall when I was talking about how changing the whole half step relationships between notes sort of untonicizes C, it makes C sound like something other than the tonic. When I made this a B flat, which is this note here, um, when I made that a B flat, I, I made the leading tone be a whole step away from the tonic, and it turns out that it no longer functions as a leading tone when you do that. It becomes actually a different scale degree that we'll talk about later becomes a subtonic. Um, again, we'll go over that later. Um, but it actually loses its status as leading tone because it no longer feels like it needs to go. I mean, I could go. Right? Or, you know. Um, I can do lots of things from the subtonic, from a leading tone that has been changed, but when I get to here, there's not a whole lot of places to go. There's a couple of places that are strange and different, but they all mostly involve a tonic in some way. But, um, but yeah, so each one of these has a role to play, and we're going to learn why when we get to chords. For right now, I just what the purpose of this is, is I should be able to say dominant, or leading tone, or tonic, or supertonic, or mediant, or subdominant in a future video, or scale degree one, second scale degree, third scale degree, and you should be able to know generally what I'm talking about. So mostly this one's a kind of boring one. It doesn't have a ton of insightful things to say. It's mostly just this is what we call stuff, but the language that we use um, to talk about these things is really important because when I say E is the mediant, or G is the dominant, or C is my tonic, or I have tonicized C. That's a really big statement, because by tonicizing C, for example, I have supertonic D, or mediantized E, or subdominantized F, or dominantized G. In fact, I've actually given labels to all the other notes in the scale. I have given those notes roles. Okay, so for today, let's review. Scales ascend from one note to the next note of the same letter name, and within that scale, they have jobs, they have roles to do, and those roles are tonic is our home note, supertonic is one above the tonic, the third scale degree is mediant, the fourth is subdominant, the fifth is dominant, and remember, we're going to see a big, important relationship between dominant and tonic. Sixth scale degree is submediant, the seventh is the leading tone, and remember, leading tone is important because it leads us up to the next tonic. That's it for today. Um, on the next video, we'll talk about how we can have tonics other than C and how that relates. If you don't understand what um, accidentals like sharps and flats and naturals are, the next video is going to start to get really confusing. So I would really recommend, if you don't understand that, maybe find a different series of tutorials about what accidentals are, because we're going to look at um, a lot of accidentals in the next video.